So the T and the B lymphocytes carry out the specific immunity, but we need to talk about the roles that each of these types of cell have. The B lymphocytes, once they're matured after the bone marrow, they're responsible for producing antibodies, which are protein molecules specific to an antigen. So here we have a mature B cell with its large nucleus, and what it does is it sends out lots and lots of these molecules which float around the blood plasma. And these molecules are antibodies. They're always made of protein, and every type of lymphocyte creates its own specific antibodies with a very unique specific 3D shape. And it will bind to a very specific antigen, like a very complicated puzzle piece, which will only bind to another very complicated but complementary puzzle piece. And then another lymphocyte, which is a B cell, makes a very slightly different type of antibody, and therefore they all have their own specific shape. So the purpose of the antibody is when it comes into contact with a pathogen, it binds to whichever specific antigen it binds to, and it neutralizes it. So we've got many B cells in the blood of different types, and they're each making different antibodies. Some are making square ones, some are making circles, just a very simplified model. Eventually a pathogen will come along and the pathogen will have particular antigens on its body or as part of its system. And the antigen itself will have a very specific 3D shape. And eventually one of the antibodies or some of the antibodies from one of these B cells will have the right shape to bind to these antigens. Most of them won't have the right shape, but one of them will do. And when they bind, they end up neutralizing the antigen. So it's kind of a game of luck as to which lymphocyte has the right shaped antibodies being sent out. The antibodies being sent out from the B cells are present in the plasma of the blood and they combine to specific antigens free in the bodily fluids or they combine to antigens on the cells. So sometimes we can have antigens floating around in the blood, for example toxins or parts of virus particles, but they can also bind to those bound to cells like we saw in the previous diagram. In this respect we tend to say that B lymphocytes are involved in humoral immunity. The antibodies are present in bodily fluids we used to call traditionally bodily fluids our humors. So the humors were things like blood and saliva and things like that. So the humoral immunity refers to the idea that this is immunity found in the bodily fluids because the antibodies can float around in those fluids. The T lymphocytes are similar but they have a slightly different function. They have specific receptors in their plasma membranes and they stay in the membrane. They don't get sent out into the fluids. And again these are very specific to antigens. So the T cells, in a very similar way to the B cells, have these receptors which are similar to antibodies and they're very specific to one unique type of antigen. So again, very specific, i.e. it will only bind to that particular antigen which has the right puzzle piece shape, just like the antibodies with the B cells, but it's plasma membrane bound this time. The T lymphocyte receptors can only bind directly to antigens which are present on a body cell. So by body cell we mean one of our own cells, but it tends to be a body cell which has been infected, so we can also call it a host cell. And what happens is when that body cell is infected, it sometimes presents the antigen onto its surface. For example, if this cell was invaded by a virus, it might start sending the virus antigen into its membrane as a kind of flag to tell other cells to come and help it because it's infected. And then what will happen is the T lymphocyte will come along, and if it has the right shape receptor, it will bind to that antigen properly. And so we have binding at this site too. Other T lymphocytes will have receptors which aren't quite the right shape, and therefore they won't be used at this time. But the point is we have lots of cells with different receptors, and so we have that choice. So whereas B cells were humoral immunity or humoral immunity, T lymphocytes are described to be involved in cell mediated immunity because they're related to our own cells which have been infected. So now that we know their function, we need to talk about the cellular response that lymphocytes carry out when they're exposed to a new pathogen. So there are millions and millions of lymphocytes floating around the body, and they each have very different receptors with specific shapes. And each receptor is specific for a different pathogenic antigen. So we've already said that T cells have these receptors in their membranes to bind to infected cells of the body, and the B cells send out antibodies which are kind of another version of those receptors. At any one time in the body, we have lots and lots of B cells and millions and millions of T cells too. And every single unique B and T cell has its own very specific unique receptor. 
So they're all waiting and designed to meet that antigen by fate, which will fit into the correct receptor. But obviously a lot of them won't be used for most of their life. If a pathogen does come into the body, the lymphocyte which does have the correct receptor has to be found and eventually activated when the specific pathogen invades the body. So say we get invaded and we get infected by this particular pathogen. It will have antigens on its body, which are a very specific shape. Eventually there will be a T cell or a B cell, which will have the right receptor that will come along and bind. And when they bind, it will be activated. And there may only be one of these floating around the body at one time. So what we say is that the receptor on the lymphocyte is complementary to the shape of the specific antigen. So eventually the right B or T cell will have the correct shaped antibody or receptor, and eventually it will fit to the antigen, and then this will activate the lymphocyte. And by saying that they bind, we can say that the antigen and the antibody or receptor are complementary in shape. And this is just in the same way that an enzyme fits into a specific substrate. They only work in one particular way. This contact between them and the subsequent activation is known as a process called clonal selection. So the reason we call this clonal selection is because essentially in the body we have a whole set of B and T cells with different shapes. And out of them, we've selected for one, which has that correct shape, and we're now going to tell it to be activated. So it's a selection out of a whole clone of different cells. And this contact between the lymphocyte receptor and the antigen can be achieved either directly or indirectly. In a direct contact case, this happens when the lymphocyte comes across the pathogenic cells in the lymph nodes. So we have the lymphocyte, and we have the specific receptor, and it's bound to the antigen on the pathogen. And the reason we call this direct contact is because it's directly hitting that pathogen, and this is happening in the lymph nodes. There's nothing in between them. On the other hand, indirect contact happens when the lymphocyte comes across an antigen-presenting cell which phagocytose the pathogen. So for example, if we had a macrophage which has engulfed a bacteria that it knows is invading the body, the bacteria gets processed through the cell and the macrophage kind of wears the antigen as a flag to warn other cells. So it's why we call it an antigen presenting cell. And it presents the antigen so that the other lymphocytes can come and bind as it did before. But of course it's not binding directly to the pathogen, it's binding to an antigen that's being worn as a flag. So we call this indirect contact. But eventually it will amount to the same response. Other immune cells like the macrophages, which are part of the non-specific immune system, can also secrete a type of cell signaling molecule, which is called an interleukin, or a family of interleukins. So again, say we had a macrophage, this could also be a neutrophil, and it's engulfed something which is foreign into its body. In doing so, of course, it's destroyed the pathogen which is useful, but it needs to tell other cells that something is invading the body. So it sends out these molecules known as interleukins. And again, they're kind of a signal or a chemical which is going to tell other cells that something is going on. The interleukins which have been released bind specifically to the selective lymphocyte and they cause it to divide by mitosis to produce lots and lots of clones. So here's the interleukin and it's bound to a particular lymphocyte which has the right shaped receptor and that receptor is designed for the antigen of that pathogen. So there's different types of binding here. There's recognition of the right lymphocyte by the antigen binding to its receptor and there's also a response to interleukins by macrophages to tell it that something needs to happen, i.e. it needs to get working. So we can't just fight off this infection with one lymphocyte because there may be millions of bacteria in the body. So it divides to make many of the same cell. And because we describe this process as mitosis, every single one that it forms is going to have that same receptor. And so these can all work together as a kind of army to fight off that antigen. Any other lymphocyte with a different shaped receptor wouldn't be much help here. This process where we increase the number of cells by mitotic division is called clonal expansion. So we had clonal selection before where we chose the right lymphocyte, but in clonal expansion, we've now decided to make that specific lymphocyte grow in numbers as much as possible as a kind of army of one type of receptor. So this whole process, going from selecting and expanding the correct lymphocyte, does take a long time and it's very slow. So sometimes this is why when you're fighting a cold, it can take many days or many weeks to fight it off selecting the right lymphocyte and then giving it time 
with the response of interleukins to divide by mitosis and make an army of lymphocytes, both of these processes take a long time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.